Welcome to Module 5, Lesson 33, Subtract a Mixed Number from a Mixed Number. Now, you have been doing a lot of adding and subtracting with fractions, and there's a lot of strategies. There are counting on, there are number lines, there are arrow ways. And what I am telling my students is that by this lesson, 33, you may use any strategy that you would choose. Even if the directions say certain ones, I am offering you the opportunity to use any strategy. However, you need to show your work. That is the best strategy for you to do. So I could see where things went wrong or I could see why things went right and how you're thinking these problems out. Now, I will be doing what the directions say to show you a variety of strategies and you could be choosing the one that works best for you. Now this one does say write a related addition sentence. This is a good way to think of subtracting with fractions because there is the opposite of subtracting, and that's adding. So you could kind of change the problem to something that works for you. For example, I know many students, um, when they add or subtract, or when they subtract something like 16 minus 9, instead of subtracting and counting down 9, instead of going 16 in your head and going 15, 14, 13, 12, and you know, that takes a while, some students think of 9, and they count up how many till they get to 16. Don't you do that? A lot of students do that. They'll say 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, it is 7 more. And you got your answer, but you used addition to figure it out. So I have this strategy on uh, number 1, A and B. They would like you to do the same thing. So the problem is 3 and 2 fifths minus 1 and 4 fifths. But what it, this is really is the difference between these two is the same as starting with 1 and 4 fifth and adding how many more get you to 3 and 2 fifths. This is a good strategy to use. Now I'm going to go ahead and do, it says use the number line or arrow way. I'm going to go ahead and draw the number line here for you so you can look at how I would work this out. Now I drew a number line that is cut into fifths and on my addition version here, I have 1 and 4 fifths as my starting place. So I'm going to mark that. I'm going to find 1. I'm going to hop over 4 fifths. That was only 3 fifths. Sorry about that. There we go. 1 and 4 fifths, right? 1 hole and 1, 2, 3, 4 hops gets me 4 fifths. Now I want to add a certain amount that gets me to where? 3 and 2 fifths, which is here. So I'm looking for that, how much do I count up? Kind of like over here when I went 9 added to how much gets me to 16. So this is all in fifths. Now that would be counting a lot of fifths. So it's good for you to stop every time you hit a hole and see how much that was. So right here, one hop, that was one-fifth. Now I could hop another hole. That would be plus another hole. And then I could hop here for two more fifths. Now all together, put these together and see how much you hopped. Well, there's a hole and a fifth and two-fifths for a total of one hole and three-fifths. Or the answer could also be written here, 1 and 3 fifths. Now, of course, you could check your work. You could add these together. 1 plus 1 is 2, and 4 fifths and 3 fifths is 8 fifths. So 2 and 8 fifths. Well, 8 fifths is too much. That's 5 fifths and 3 fifths more. So it's a whole, so this would turn into a 3, and 3 fifths more, which is exactly what we have here, and it's exactly what we started with. So we did our work correct. All right, do you want to see that again? So instead of thinking of subtraction, you could think of it as really it's 2 and 5 eighths minus something, okay, I'll put a question mark there, would get us plus, sorry, plus something more, would get us to 5 and 3 eighths. Now, I'd like to think about this on a number line, so I'm going to draw it. All right, I've drawn my number line into eighths. I'm going to mark where I'm starting, two and five eighths. 
one, two, three, four, five. And I want to end at five and three eighths. Now this is a big difference between the two, right? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the difference between these two. Remember, it's easier to stop when you get to holes. All right, how many hops was that? One, two, three eighths. Then I would like to do another one, one, and three more eighths. Now all these hops that I did, I need to put them together, right? Two and three eighths and three eighths is six eighths. So my answer is two and six eighths. The missing piece here was two and six eighths, which is the answer to my question. All right, now on to the next section. This time they want you to decompose a fractional part and still show some way to do it with a number line or arrow way. Remember, you can use any strategy at this point. So this method is to subtract the whole numbers, okay? Four minus one is three. On this one, four minus two is two. So we could start off by saying I have two and one seventh, and I still need to subtract the four sevenths. Now how did I come up with that? Four minus two is two, but we can't do one seventh minus four sevenths. You can't have a seventh and take away four sevenths. So I still have this problem to work out. So the best way to work it out is to break apart this four sevenths into something I can subtract. I can take one seventh away and still have three sevenths left over. Right, one and three make four sevenths. So I now can change my two and a seventh to a, just a two, right? But I still have to take away the three more sevenths. So at this point, you know your number is going to go below two. It's going to be one. And if there were three sevenths pulled out of seven sevenths, that extra hole, you would have four more sevenths left over. Okay, that is complete according to what I am requiring you to do. You do not have to also show the arrow way or the number line. Now, for C, I could solve this purely by doing the number line if I'd like, but I'd have to draw a number line into twelfths, right? So let's go ahead and use the arrow strategy. Now, the arrow strategy works really well counting up. So I'm going to write this problem like we did before as a writing up, counting up kind of a problem. So 3 and 8 twelfths plus some amount that I'm missing should get me to 5 and 5 twelfths. Instead of drawing a number line, I'm just going to do the arrows and I'm going to count up and try to make holes to make it easier. So I'll start at 3 and five, 8 twelfths. And I'm going to add four more twelfths. Now, why would I do that? Doesn't that get me to twelve twelfths, which now gets me to four? And then I want to get to five, so I'm going to add another hole. And then I want to get to five and five twelfths. So to get to there, I'm going to need five more twelfths. Now, did that seem easy to get to? Now, the important part is, what did I add up every arrow I wrote it down so there was a hole here and there was five twelfths and four twelfths for nine twelfths so I came up with a total of a hole and nine twelfths so the difference between these two numbers is one and nine twelfths now on to the next part kind of hard for me to see this page here. There we go. All right, subtract as shown by decomposing by taking one out. So this is that strategy where you take out a whole. So if you look at the example here, we have our problem. They went ahead and subtracted 5 minus 3, 2, and got 3. They left the 5 eighths alone, and they left the 7 eighths alone. Now, when you take out a whole, you still have three in five eighths, but you just mix it with a hole and two in five eighths for a total of three, of course. 
And now it's easy to subtract this, the 1 minus the 7 eighths. That, of course, leaves you with only an eighth, right? 1 and, five eight, one and minus 7 eighths is still being subtracted. So that's where 1 eighth comes in. But don't forget this guy. This guy, this 2 and 5 eighths, is still part of our problem. 2 and 5 eighths. And we have the eighth for a total of 2 and 6 eighths. This is a pretty cool strategy. Let's practice it on B. So there is something I can subtract here. The 4 minus the 3. That'll get me 1. But there's 3 twelfths minus 8 twelfths, which doesn't really work very well. So I'm going to pull one out, and I'm going to have 3 twelfths and a 1. Now I can do 1 minus 8 twelfths. That would get me 4 twelfths. But don't forget, I have a 3 twelfths here. 3 more twelfths for a total of 7 twelfths. Okay? Now on to the next page, the next section here. They offer all students to use any strategy. Now we've taken up a lot of time, and there are a lot of strategies, perhaps too much for many students. So is there any that makes sense to you? Is there something that works out really well? Okay? Let's try the arrow method. I'm going to try the arrow method on C. Okay? Um, or how about on A, because that's where we'd start. So it works really well counting up. I would say that 4 and 3 ninths plus some amount gets me to 6 and a ninth. So how do I get there? Well, I'd start at 4 and 3 ninths, and I would count up 6 more ninths to get me to 5. And then I also want to get to 6, so I'll add a whole. And then I want to add up one more ninth for 6 and a ninth. So what did I do? I did 6 ninths and 1 ninth and a whole for a total of 1 whole and 7 ninths. All right? Or how about taking out 1? Strategy we used just um, above this part. So 8 minus 5 leaves me with 3, but I still have my 7, ninth, seven twelfths minus my 9 twelfths, which doesn't work very well. So I'll break this up into 2 and 7 twelfths and a whole. Okay? That's still 3, right? But 1 whole minus seven, 9 twelfths is 3 twelfths. So I could look at this as 3 twelfths and don't forget my 2 and 7 twelfths for a total of 2 and 10 twelfths. All right? Long video, but there are lots of strategies for subtracting. If you are struggling with subtracting and you need more help, then see me, and I'd be glad to. Thanks.